Hey everyone, here I'm going to talk about how to use the Cyclops in Subnautica and how to construct one if you haven't got one. Um, you basically explore the wrecks and eventually you'll find all of the components uh, to build a Cyclops. It takes quite a while um, and you know eventually, once you've got it, if you build one of these mobile vehicle bays, you can jump on here, use the vehicle bay and you will have an option here for constructing the Cyclops, which requires these various components, plus steel ingot, enamel glass, lubricant, advanced wiring kit, and lead. Once you've got all those and you build it, you get an absolute beast of a vehicle. Now, uh, a YouTuber called Stumpy West asked me uh, if I could do a video on the Cyclops because he was wondering whether it's worth the effort because it is one huge beast. So if you're used to the Seamoth, the Seamoth flies around really easy to use tool, but the Cyclops is massive. So the game specifically says that the Cyclops was made for several people uh, to work on, but obviously with you being the sole inhabitant of the planet that you're on, it's pretty hard to navigate this. However, it's still very useful. So let me show you how it works. So we've got the Cyclops here. You can see it's absolutely massive. To access the Cyclops, we go down here and then we can jump into the Cyclops by boarding here and pressing A. Oops, get in. There we go. So once we're on the Cyclops, there's a few different areas that you can explore. It has some inbuilt storage, which, which you can see here. So you've got several little cupboards. They're not very big, but they do give you a bit of storage. So you can see I've got some storage here and I can chuck stuff on these by simply switching from my inventory over to container, just, just like we do with a wardrobe. Wardrobe storage locker, <laughs> wardrobe. This isn't lying on the witch of the wardrobe, is it? So if I want to switch container, I hit the right trigger on the Xbox and away it goes over here. Similarly, if I want to move something from here over to there, same thing, right trigger and away it goes. So they're my inbuilt storage lockers, which is a great start. There are various little bulkhead doors that you can close if you wish, so you can just hit A to close them. We can explore down the, the lower deck here. So we've got this area here where we've got a prawn suit, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, and we could go up to this area here, which takes us to the back of the um, Cyclops. And again, we've got this little area here that we can close. So let's just close that. Um, and again, talk about what we've got on, on the Cyclops. I don't think there's any benefit of doing that. Maybe it helps integrity slightly, or if there's a water leak or something, I don't know. Anyway, we've climbed up here. This is our main area to pilot around with the sub, which we're gonna do in a little bit, but I wanna talk about some of the other areas that you've got on the ship. First of all, this here shows the health of the Cyclops, so you can see that the health is all, all looking good. But if there is a problem, if there's something attached to your ship or beasties or whatever attacking it, you'll see this health bar will go down and then you're starting to get into trouble. I might navigate off and see if we can get into some trouble just to show you how that works. Over here, you can change the submarine name if you wish. So you can click on here to edit and give it a name. Otherwise, it'll just be known as Cyclops. You can also change the colors here and um, that'll change the core colors of the Cyclops if you so wish. This toggles the internal lighting on and off. So if it's off, you can still see slightly. Um, obviously this uses power, which we'll talk about in a minute. And you can also toggle the external floodlights on and off. Personally, I find these don't do a great deal of uh, benefit, but you can put them on if you so wish. Oh, I need some fluid. It just so happens that I've got some uh, trees that I've manually added to this that I could use for a bit of fluid. So we'll just chop one of these here and then drink that. Just as well. And we'll talk about tips for adding this, but let's just add a bit of water while I remember. If you're interested in the Bulbo tree, I think I'll do a separate little video on it. Um, I might not, but never mind. Right, so getting back to where we were. Um, so that's standard, what we've got there. Uh, we'll move through the ship now. This is actually stuff that I've added, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Um, this is built into the tool and what you can do with the um, Cyclops is dock a, a vehicle and it's very useful for carrying a prawn suit around. So when you get a prawn suit, the prawn suit is awesome for exploring deeper in the game and also mining very useful materials. So you can get very big um, sort of deposits 
that can't be just collected or chipped away. So unlike the you know simple hunk of stone, there are massive blocks of stuff that you can uh, sort of drill away with a prawn suit if you've got the drill arm attached to the prawn suit. Um, so when we're in this area here, I can access the upgrades of the prawn suit. So I can see this particular prawn suit has a variety of upgrades, Mark II depth module, storage module, another storage module, a drill arm. Um, I can also adjust these or take them out. Uh, so you can see I can hit A to unequip. I'm not sure if the storage modules stack. I think they do, uh, but I might be wrong on that. The other thing I can do is access the storage module here. So my prawn suit, I, you can see I've got a bit of titanium, uh, a bit of crystalline sulfur and quartz. If I want to grab any of these, just like an ordinary locker, I just right trigger to grab these out of the prawn suit like so. So it's quite cool that once that's docked, um, we're all good. I will come back to the prawn suit. We will explore that in just a minute. Um, that is something I added separately, which I will talk about. This is the decoy launcher. You can create decoys using a modification station, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, decoys are useful if something big attacks the Cyclops. You can fire out a decoy and hopefully the monster will go after the decoy rather than your Cyclops. Um, if we come back to here, this is the Cyclops upgrade fabricator. This is where you can fabricate specific upgrades for the Cyclops. So if we have a little look, you can create the depth module Mark 1. Um, this enables the Cyclops to go a bit deeper, requires those um, components that we can see there. Uh, Cyclops engine efficiency module. This will improve the engine efficiency, which is highly recommended because the Cyclops munches power. Um, you can have a shield generator. This is quite useful for, there's lots of little things that suck onto the ship and it will steal power away from the ship. Firing this on now and again will zap them off of the ship and save you having to manually go out and remove them. Um, this is a sonar upgrade. This is incredibly important. This basically enables you to fire out a sonar and see more of your surroundings. This is very useful when you're going deeper and it's dark outside. Um, this really helps you navigate much easier. This, the docking bay repair module helps um, repair any vehicles docked inside the Cyclops. So you could opt to dock, I believe, a Seamoth in there as, instead of the prawn suit, but personally I find the prawn suit more useful. Fire suppression system is worth having a little look at. If uh, creatures attack the Cyclops or it gets too damaged, it can catch on fire. Or if you burn the motor too hard, again, a fire can start and the fire suppression system can help uh, contain the fire and get rid of it which is very important decoy tube upgrade you may have seen we can apply one creature decoy at the minute if we add this we can increase the capacity of that decoy tube and lastly the thermal reactor module this basically enables the cyclops to recharge if you're in an area which is very hot so as you go deeper inside uh, in subnautica you can sometimes find thermal vents um, that can help that you can basically park near and gradually recharge the batteries inside the Cyclops. So let's come back out of here. These are your power cells that are required to power the uh, Cyclops. There are six of them uh, and we can take them in or out by just going here and then I can either swap them or unload a power cell. So I'm using the left stick to move around. So I've pulled that one out. If I want to put a power source in there, I can hit A and chuck in a power cell again. So you can see this one is saying that one's got charge of 100%, 100%, 100%. So I think I recently changed these. You'll see these will drop down fairly quickly. This is just the rear of the Cyclops going back to the, the screw at the back of the Cyclops, which generates it. So as if we turn on the engine, they start spinning around. Um, if we go to the other side, uh, we've got our other power cells here that's chucking a power cell here so we've got all six now filled the cyclops will work with uh without um some of these power cells in there so if you haven't got six you can still use it this talks about the upgrades and how much energy we've got you can see we've almost got full energy we've got full health so all is good and this is where we add our upgrade so if we build an upgrade we can add it here by pressing a and similar to what we saw with the prawn suit we can apply them or unequip them here. So you can see I've got a depth module mark three, so I can increase diving depth to maximum, uh, engine efficiency module, sonar upgrade, and a thermal reactor module. So I've got a few things added there. So we're nearly there. A couple of other things to point out, fire extinguishers. You can see there's some dotted around the Cyclops. You can grab these to put out fires, can be rather useful on the Cyclops. Uh, and you do have a bit of space to add additional components. So if you've got the habitat builder, 
Um, you can apply stuff if you've discovered it. Things I would recommend is a bed so you can sleep on the Cyclops if you're because you're likely to be exploring quite far. Um, I also recommend that you add some plant pots with some bulbo trees in. Um, the reason for this is again you can be quite far away and if you've got bulbo trees at least you've got a good source of food and water on site because they give you food and water as you can see here. Uh, so they are very useful to have and just remember not to eat the entire bulbo tree and forget to re replant things otherwise you're in trouble. Um, I don't think you've got enough room for a big interior grow bed um, so that's why I've gone with these little plant pots here. Storage lockers I've gone for the larger storage lockers because you've got space here like you can see here and again as you're exploring you're likely to pick up loads of stuff so having a multitude of lockers on on board the Cyclops is very wise as well. The other thing that I put on board is a modification station um, because this you can use to upgrade modules. Now um, the Cyclops Mark 1 you could do on the other station but you can see you can upgrade to Mark 2 and Mark 3 here. Uh, to do that you need to take the Mark 1 module and also add these other things to upgrade it. You also want to be very careful where you pull the depth module out of the system because if you're down deep you can do serious damage to the Cyclops module if you then lose its depth resistance. So that's something to point out as well. So I put a modification station on. I also put in a fabricator so I can fabricate basic equipment. What I've basically created here, as you can see, is a fairly simple movable base, and that's what the Cyclops is all about. So let's just close this and have a little look at how this baby operates. This is about the hardest thing with the sub because it is so big and cumbersome. Let's put that knife away. I look like a crazy person here, don't we? So let's hit A to pilot the sub. And what it will immediately point you to is what our depth is at the minute, what our power is like, and other things on here. So I can control my cameras here. This first one here, I move the right stick, and then I pressed A, and then I can cycle through the cameras. This one is the keel camera, which is this one here. Typical, it's, it's dark. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sleep so we can see a bit better outside. So let's go and you can see why the bed is useful. <laughs> so we'll just sleep. There we go. Now, I warned you that the Cyclops munches power. So one thing you want to do ideally before you start exploring is to have an absolute ton of power cells on board um, so you can change them through frequently. Later on in the game, you, you get a more powerful power cell. Uh, I won't spoil how you get it or where you get it, but when you get that, you can um, the sort of power consumption of the Cyclops is much easier to handle. But until you get that, you want to have a good bank of power cells or steer 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 stay nearby your main base and have some power cell charges so you can charge your power cells back on base right so pilot the sub press a first thing is the cameras so if you hit the camera one there we can cycle through using the d-pad left and right through our different cameras so we have the conning tower the screw the keel personally i think the keel is very useful this is just below the cyclops and because this thing is so big this one i find very useful to see where we are going okay when you if you want you can toggle on the camera light on or off you can see it doesn't make a great deal of difference in daylight but there's an option there to toggle it on and off you can see down the bottom right there's a little option there that shows you where your camera is Oh, I know, it doesn't really seem to do that. I'm, just, I'm telling Paul keys there. It doesn't really seem to make a difference. But that keel one, I think, is the most useful. Right trigger to exit. So we're back in this main view here. Um, we've got the rig for silent running. This one is quite useful if you're going down deep and there's lots of horrible things floating about. This will make the um, Cyclops run that little bit quieter. It uses a bit more power, I believe, um, but it's useful to have. If I had a decoy, it would show here that and I can release that decoy from here, but I haven't got one. I released it on my last playthrough. Um, and this one is very useful. This is activate the sonar if you've got that module added. Um, I can also see my maximum depth. You can see I can go to a maximum of 1700 meters. I can't remember what the Cyclops goes to a stand. I think it's about eight or 900 meters, but upgrade the depth modules over time and then you, you will get more stuff. So to power up the engine, we hit this. And there we go. And then we've got these three modes here. So we've got slow, medium, and fast. And then when we're ready to go, we just push the left stick forwards or up. 
and things will go forwards. Now you can see it's really hard to see where on earth I am here because this thing is so big. So this is where those cameras are rather useful. So if I flick to the camera underneath, you can see this is a little bit easier for me to see what is going on. So let's go down a little bit deeper and I'll try and talk about some of these things. One thing you've got to really bear in mind is the size of this thing is huge. Um, so you're not going to be able to go down to the same sort of areas that you can with a little sea moth. So harder to explore, you know, deep caves and ravines and things like that. However, there are some places that this is very useful to act as a mobile base. So what I'm going to do is show you how the prawn suit works with this as well, um, just so you can get an idea of how this works. This is where the keel is quite useful. So we can see roughly how deep we are, where the, the ocean floor is and how this can all work. There's a little bit over there, which is a component that we could scan. I've got pretty much everything, but that's some of the components you can look at to, to find certain things. So when we're ready to come out of here, let's go here. Um, rig for silent running, like I say, that will make things a little bit quieter. So you might hear it slightly, it's slightly quieter, but I always put that on when I'm in a, in a dodgy area where there's beasties that might attack the Cyclops. It will use a little bit more energy. This is the really cool mode. Let's activate the sonar check out how clear it makes things now so i can see much better what is going on now this uses a lot more power um, but it is very very useful so you can see even that small bit that i've moved i've already down to 93 92 91 so this silent running is really chumping things chumping things chumping things as is the sonar so if you don't need them deactivate it because they do use a lot of power so you can see my power is now a lot happier and if you're at a point where you think, do you know what? I'm now going to explore with the prawn suit, power down the engine, oh and that's God. going to save a bit of energy as well. When you're ready to leave the um, controls, you hit B to exit. And now let's go and explore that prawn suit. So that was through here. And if we want to jump in the prawn suit, we open this hatch here and we enter the prawn. The prawn will then drop out of the bottom of the uh, Cyclops and then we are free to explore with our prawn suit as we see fit. And now one thing to point out when you're exploring with a prawn suit is you don't wanna have your Cyclops too far up above it because it makes it very, very hard to jump back into the Cyclops. So I'll probably cover the prawn suit in a separate video. Um, I'm holding down the left button to jump up here, but basically to get back into the Cyclops once you've done your exploring and you've found stuff that you wanna harvest or collect, I suppose we should collect something, shouldn't we? That's just find something to collect <laughs> so it's not completely pointless you are also free to jump out of the prawn soap by hitting uh, b and then i could grab a scanner let's let me find a scanner have i got a scanner here there's my scanner let's go with that so if you find components like this this is a CMOS fragment i've scanned that and now that's safe but i already have that fragment so it made no difference to me so back in the prawn suit you could do with collecting something that's fine surely there's something oh, there we go so as i collect something like this quartz i go up to it right trigger that's going to be added to the seamos uh, sorry the prawn suit storage and then to access this back on the cyclops i need to jump back up to it so you can see the cyclops is pretty high up i've got to basically aim for those doors there um, so i hold it down at the left button and then i've got to start, try and scoot forward here if i miss it I'm going to have to go down and try again so you can see it's a bit of bit of sort of jiggery pokery to do so let's try again there we go and i'm in so that's my prawn suit that's how we do it a couple of other things to point out is if the uh the ship gets damaged let's see if we can damage it a bit God, I hate damaging ships needlessly but let's just do smash into something a little bit and just do a little bit of damage so you can see now i've bashed the ship slightly into things so this is the problem with this view you can see it's very hard to see uh, what's going on here and i'm doing a little bit of damage to the ship so if we come out of here we're still all right we've not done a great deal of damage to it but if there is damage it will show up on here and what you then want to do is go out of the ship and repair it with your repair tool. Um, the more damage you do to it, the worse it can go. Another thing I just point out just before we do this is you can go very fast, but watch how this this 
generates a lot of noise it also burns a lot of energy we're going up and down the same as we do with um a any other anything else left button is going up right button is going down i'm just going to spin around here a little bit so you can see the engine is overheating if i let it overheat which i'm not going to do a fire could occur and that is a nightmare you can lose your cyclops very very quickly and we need to use the fire extinguishers to put it out as quickly as we can um, so if we get to the point where the exterior is damaged that's where you can jump out of the cyclops and repair it using your repair tool and that's probably the last thing i'm just going to say about it is if that does occur what you do is you climb out the ladder and you are free to swim outside um, what you want to bear in mind is that you've got a good reinforced dive suit if you're down deep in the cyclops because if you have to go out to repair things that's important but you would see little bubbles coming out of areas that are damaged and if they are damaged you then use your repair tool on wherever is damaged to repair the damaged area but we haven't really damaged the cyclops much here. i don't really want to damage it that much i think that's pretty much it for the cyclops um, that i wanted to cover i can't think of much else that i've missed um, just remember that that's where you go into the area here um, so yeah think of it as a mobile base it's very powerful it's great to have all that storage and you're going to be cycling backwards and forwards to to areas using it um, there's a navigation thing there you've got a little compass on the front i think that's it if i've missed anything do let me know oh this here this would show if there's any um, monsters around your ship you might have seen it highlight red a minute ago uh, and if it is, you could try slowing down, you could try a creature decoy, etc, etc. But really you want to practice just being in this area with the camera on and driving using one of the cameras like this keel camera here. The way I'm moving the camera around, by the way, is with the right stick. So that's how I'm doing that. And uh, that is it. So if that was useful to you, give us a thumbs up, please. That's much appreciated. Any comments, welcome. Stampy West, Stampy West, Dumpy West. I hope that answered your questions. If I missed anything, do let me know and I'll do my best to help. Uh, the rest of you, if you, there you go, you see that spinning little engine there. If there's anything that uh, you need clarity on, do let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to help or if there's anything else in Subnautica that's confusing you. Again, let me know or check out my other tutorials. If you have a little look at the rest of my channel, there's loads of tutorials. I've got hundreds of videos on here. I'm always uploading new stuff on a weekly basis. Um, if there's anything you want me to cover, let me know or fail in that. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. You'll be kept up to date with my future stuff. Thanks so much.